Welcome to the podcast realm, where words become magic and ideas take flight. Get ready to be captivated as our host Curtis Norman. Armed with a microphone and a passion for storytelling, he embarks on a journey through the airwaves. This is not just a podcast, it's an experience. Sit back, relax, and let the journey begin. Welcome to the What's News with Norman podcast. Thanks, Morgan, for such a great uh, introduction there. Yeah, for those of you that didn't know, I have a blog called What's News with Norman, and it uh, went a little viral. Uh, I'm talking about digital citizenship in my ECNI 832 class this semester. Um, So some people are like, hey, you should start a podcast. So that's why we're here today. Uh, My goal in this podcast is to keep it to under seven minutes. I want you to be able to listen to this podcast like, at the red lights on your commute to work. Um, and what we're going to do today is I want the uh, viewers to have a, a little Q&A with me. So I'm going to take some calls today and hopefully answer some of their questions. Our first call today uh, is Brock from Washington, D.C. Go ahead, Brock. Hi, Curtis. Big fan. First time caller, long time listener. I am wondering if you could elaborate your thoughts on Sherry Torkley and Neil Postman. Thanks, Brock, for the call. Uh, yeah, I think what you're referencing is my first blog of the uh, year for this uh, this class. Uh, it was the one I called, the one where he realized his house was connected, but his home was not. Sherry uh, Turkle uh, had a TED talk we were introduced to that week, and it was called Connected, But Alone. And I think one of the things that really stood out for me in that TED talk was that we... Uh, Sherry mentioned that we are letting technology take us to places that we don't want to go. And so I really had to self-reflect as a parent. And I was like, is technology taking my family places I don't want it to go? And the other thing Sherry mentioned was that these little devices in our pockets, they not only change what we do, but they also can change who we are. And is that what I want for my family? So this semester, I did a lot of self-reflecting, not only as an educator and an administrator, but as a parent. As for Neil Poston, well, we were introduced to a speech he gave in 1998, so a long time ago, and it was the five things we need to know about technological change. And the one thing that he said that stood out for me there, all technological change is a trade-off. For every advantage of new technology offers, there's also a corresponding disadvantage. So that really makes me think with AI, with the phones becoming smaller and faster, what is the disadvantage that uh, what's the trade-off here all right our next caller Mm, we're popular today in uh, washington dc uh donald from washington dc go ahead you're on the air that last caller was fake news some might say this is the most perfect phone call ever made to a podcast people always tell me donald you're the best at everything so i thought i'd grace your little show with my presence let me tell you i'm the master at figuring out what's real and what's fake nobody does it better I've got this incredible sixth sense. It's like a superpower. I can't spot fake news from a mile away. Thanks for the call, Donald. I don't think you actually had a question in there. You were just basically talking about yourself. But I think you might have been referring to my blog post um, called What If Everyone Has a Blue Check Mark?" And that week in class, uh, Graham, George, Jordan, and Kimberly, they talked about um, fake news. And that really made me question how I analyze uh, the sources that I get my information from on a daily basis. It used to be easy, I found, on Twitter when everybody had a blue check, or sorry, before everyone had a blue check mark. Um, then I could tell if my source was reliable or not. And that strategy doesn't work so much for me anymore. And now I'm forced to look at other strategies, such as... Um, the number of followers the person that posted has, or the number of reposts or uh, likes, things like that I take into account now. All right, our next caller is Joe from Texas. Go ahead, Joe. You're on the air. Bro, have you ever tried elk meat? Like you kill it, you eat it, it's primal, makes you feel alive. Hey, Joe, uh, I'm not sure if you know how a podcast works, <laughs> but... Uh, you didn't really have a question there, just a lot about elk meat. Anyways, um, you know what? I have never tried elk meat, but one thing I did try is I tried Googling the same uh, topic on two different devices, my own device and my wife's device. And you know what? It wasn't the same results. And we were introduced to that uh, that concept this uh, this year 
called filter bubbles. And that's something that uh, I never knew existed before this. Did you know that um, if you Google, let's say, uh, Palestine or anything like current in the news, you will not get the same results on two different devices. It all depends about this filter bubble you live in. That was pretty alarming to me and something I really have to think about when I start Googling uh, for information. Our next caller is Liam from Ireland. Go ahead, Liam. Hi, Curtis. I do have a very particular set of skills. Skills I have acquired over a very long career. What set of skills did you acquire taking this class this semester? Thanks for the call, Liam. I, I don't know if it's a particular set of skills that I acquired, but the one thing that I will take away from this class is how important it is to teach digital citizenship to kids, students in K all the way through 12. And as, a, as an adult, we need to learn these skills. And that's the one thing I'm gonna walk away from this class is how can I incorporate into my teaching on a daily basis um, digital citizenship? Or like, what does that look like in a school setting? And how can I support that as an administrator? All right, our next caller is Napoleon from Utah. Go ahead, Napoleon, what's your question? My brother Kip keeps talking to these girls online from who knows where. Thanks for the call, Napoleon. I, uh, you know, this reminds me of my major project I did. I studied uh, Roblox and Snapchat. Now, Snapchat, that one makes me nervous. I found some uh, pretty alarming information there that I shared on my one blog. Do you know that two thirds of all the teens that have Snapchat have been approached by scammers for some sextortion? And that of those two thirds, one third have actually fallen for the scam? That means there are tens of millions of teens falling for these scammers. So it's very important to talk to your brother. If these girls from wherever he's talking to turn out to not be real and he falls for one of these scams, please help him through this. Let him know there is help out there. He can report those people. And then you talk to him about what he can do in those cases. And I alluded to that in my blog a bit. Thanks for the call. Hey there, it's Joe. Just wanted to say thanks for the lively discussion. It's important we focus on the real issues. Joe, I've got to say, I've had elk, tremendous elk, but let's not forget that Trump steaks were the best. Okay, nobody does steaks like I do. First off, Don, you're getting your Joe's mistaken. Um, you're thinking Rogan, not Biden. And uh, you should figure that out by next uh, November. Anyways, uh, thanks ECI 832, Dr. Kiros, and uh, everybody else, uh, all my all my fellow classmates. I appreciated uh, learning alongside you this semester. Thanks a lot. Take care. Enjoy the break.